Welcome to the Devonport Camera Club's Projected Images 6 competition results. This month's entries were judged by Peter O'Brien. The club would like to thank Peter for his extensive and generous comments and for sharing a selection of his award-winning images. The following images were not given an award, allowing their authors to re-enter them with amendments, if needed, in later club competitions. I like the red surrounded by the greens and yellows. It does make the red foliage pop. But then I start looking for what else there is to see, and there is not much else. The low bushes in the background and the out-of-focus greenery in the bottom right corner are distracting. A good attempt, but there needs to be more to captivate the viewer. A portrait of a seal. It's taken from an unusual angle as the viewer is looking up to the head. There's a lot of shadow that could be lightened to reveal more detail. There is a catch light in the eye, which is a plus, and the ear is sharp, but the nose looks a bit soft, so maybe a different f-stop would have helped. After observing the portrait, the viewer is not left with much else to keep the interest going. A good capture, but it needs more to hold a viewer's interest. I looked at this image and wondered what drew the author's attention. The repetition of the name William seems to have caught the author's imagination, but as the viewer, does it capture mine? A little. Now, what else is there to see? The background behind the headstone is sharp. The author could have considered a wide f-stop so that the background is blurred out. There is not a lot of depth of field needed for the headstone, so some blurring is possible. A fun image. I like the juxtaposition of the green and orange with the blue-grey of the moody sky. The portrait format suits the composition with the tree placed on the third. There's a lot of foreground, but it is rescued from a cropping comment by the lighter green and yellow areas in the lowest part of the image. The light appears to be coming from the top right, lighting up the outer foliage, and there are some shadows in the deeper areas. The appearance of the leaves looks odd, as if it has been over-processed, or maybe it's a tree I'm not familiar with. Basically, a colourful image. A late evening or early morning shot of the rigged boat. As the boat gets a bit silhouetted, I feel there is some detail that is hiding there in the shadows. The background is not quite in focus, and so it draws the viewer's attention away from the subject. As the far shore is a long way away, a wider f-stop would have rendered the far shore blurry, which would also have enhanced the gorgeous orange light in the sky. A good image if the details in the boat are brought out. The author has done a great job in isolating the subject, the bike, from the many distractions surrounding it. It raises questions like, how long has it been there? Leaves cover the front wheel. Is it just a garden decoration? Though the seat looks to be not too old. The house and bathtub are there, but hinted at rather than being a distraction. The central composition says that the subject is the bike, and that is where the viewer's gaze first goes to. Well done. Rainbow bee-eaters are one of my favourite birds. My initial thought was that the scions look uh, oversaturated, but I checked with some I took recently, and one image had similar high saturation in the scions. There are two issues that I see, and the strongest is the blue colour cast in the shadows on some branches and casuarina needles. There's also a slightly blown-out area of the breast of the right-hand bird. This is understandable due to the range of light and shade in this image, but exposing for the highlights helps in this instance. 
The left hand bee eater is well exposed and the capture in flight is a bonus. They move so fast that an in-flight image is not easy to get. The shutter speed has been well chosen to get the flying bee eater sharp. A great shot that is let down by the strong blues in the branches. An interesting waterfall with a number of cascading levels. I had originally thought that there was some chromatic noise in the rocks, but on closer inspection it is leaves and other detritus. Waterfalls often have a light source up towards the top of the falls, and in this instance the water at the top is blown out, and the shutter speed may be a touch too slow, as it is a bit milky and some detail has been lost. Being picky now, I wonder if all the bushes on the right-hand side of the image are needed for the story. Just some thoughts for the author. I pondered over this one. How much night sky, how much water with reflections, and how much bridge is needed to tell the story? Is there too much information for the viewer, and so will they move on? I can see about three different compositions that would simplify this image and still tell the same story of the bridge at night and how the lights reflect in the water. I will leave it to the author to experiment, otherwise the image has been nicely exposed with details showing throughout. I really like the orchid and the detail that it shows. It has been well captured to be sharp throughout the orchid. But what I have a problem with is how the orchid is bright, so it stands out, but the surrounds are at a different light level, which makes the image look unnatural. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but as a viewer, this is what I perceive. This has been handled with a good shutter speed to freeze the action. There is a slight motion blur of the people, but from a distance it's not too noticeable. The water spray is not blown out. I'm assuming that the spray is so fine that detail is not achievable. The water is a strange green, but then that could be the correct colour. A shot taken with the sun low on the horizon, so that the right side of Uluru is lit and there are shadows on the left. The bushes have just the tops kissed by the sun. The moon is sort of a bonus, but it does not add much to the story for me. There is a haze across the image, and this may have muted some of the colours. There is a magenta haze on the left and right of the sky that does not help the image. It does not look as though the author had the best of conditions to get this shot. There are some lovely colours in this image, with the magentas and oranges, with some hints of yellow. But there is a lot in a thin strip in the middle of the image. Does there need to be so much sky? Does there need to be so much water? Where does the author want the viewer to look? The boats and buildings are all the same tonal range. Perhaps the left-hand boat could be lightened a little, which would draw the viewer's attention, and then the ship and building behind could get lightened a little to draw attention there. Do we need to see the left and right sides of the image? I suggest a crop at the pile on the left and then the one near the middle. Make the crop a portrait, so vertical, and capture those wonderful oranges and magentas. With the boat, ship and building a bit lighter, then the viewer's eye is drawn into the image and contained there to explore the details that are in that suggested area. Just a thought. Fungi can be difficult to photograph. They're not often at convenient height, and so dexterity is required, which adds to the degree of difficulty in capturing a good fungi image. There is detail in the fungi with just the far edges starting to lose focus. The background is nicely dark and out of focus, which helps to lighten the fungi, but there's an issue with the ground around the base of the fungi, which is much less exposed than the fungi. I would like to have seen some mid-tones in this area and fading to the background so that the scene would look more natural. 
At the moment, it is a bright fungus floating in dark surrounds. Nevertheless, it is a great image that could be raised to a higher level with more realistic processing. It's difficult to get propeller planes with some motion blur in the prop whilst still panning on the planes themselves to get them sharp. The shutter speed has been slow enough to get some motion blur and the aircraft themselves are sharp. A great achievement. The smoke trails add to the image, particularly since only three have significant trails. As can happen on a clear day shooting towards the sky, there is a slight haze across the image. See if you can think that the D haze slider in the effects tab in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw improves it or not. It can be a personal taste item. It will change colours, so be careful with it. What intrigued me with this image was, how did the dog get there without an obvious track? I think I can see a possible paw mark on the very right edge. The dog is cute. It has its attention on something out of the frame. A ball, perhaps. If you can get the viewer to be wondering, you keep them engaged with your image. There is a slight blowout in the fur between the ears and down the back, but I am being picky, since it is a great image. There are so many questions. How did it get there without showing a track? What is it looking at? Is it about to move or having a rest? A great story. I'm in two minds about this image. I was tempted to not send this one back if the author wanted to follow my suggestions, but in the end I felt it was too good. Divide the image down the middle, basically on the cloud in the water. To the left there's not a lot to be excited about. It's up to the author to consider if this is necessary to tell the story in the image. For me, the story is the right half of the image with the gorgeous oranges and blues. I think that this image has more potential, but deserves an award based on how the author wanted to present it. I love the magenta and yellows in this image. It draws the viewer in as these are colours not often seen. The image is slightly soft in the clouds, but this can be forgiven for the lighting conditions. There is foreground, middle ground and distant components that help to draw the viewer into the image. I like the inventiveness of this capture. The young girl looking up gets the viewer to wonder what she could be looking at. As she has a camera, is it a bird? Is it something unusual up there? Is she considering taking a photo? A good story. The composition has the girl off-centre so that the gaze is to the top middle of the frame. The girl, clothing and accessories are all sharp. The background is nicely blurred and has a look like it's been done in post-processing, but it could also have been achieved with a well-chosen f-stop. The background with the house and fence is not the best, but the story is what makes this image. I like the diagonal composition as it adds energy to the image and a jet implies energy. The shutter speed has been high enough to freeze the jet and the panning has removed any motion blur. The smoke and the orange in the exhausts add to the story. You were blessed with a great sky with the cloud at the same angle as the jet's direction. If it is a replaced sky, which is allowable in open, then I hope that it is your sky, a great image. A well-captured waterfall. The water flow still shows some detail, so the shutter speed has been well chosen. The exposure has captured all the details throughout the scene, and the water at the top is not blown out, so well handled. The branch in the front is distracting, but I am assuming that it is where you could stand, rather than being included as foreground interest. 
The range of colours from the browns and greens is great and the light shows shadows as well as the right level on the water and rocks. I like the simplicity of this shot, a beautiful flower that has been lit to show all the detail. It is sharp throughout. The black background is achievable with flash, but it could have been done in post-processing. It doesn't matter, as the red stands out. This looks to be a staged shot, and it's been well handled. It's compulsory to photograph superb fairy wrens. They are such beautiful birds, but they don't stay still for long. Getting a shot at the same level is not easy. Is this on a bit of raised ground, as the background falls away just behind the wren to have a beautiful bokeh? The image is well exposed and the wren is sharp, so the author has chosen the camera settings to suit this image. The central composition works and he looks to be thinking, where will he flit to next? A well-captured waterfall scene that has detail throughout. The top of the waterfall has not been blown out, but the water is too milky for me, as detail has been lost in the water. Now, the author may prefer this milky look, and that's okay, as it is a personal preference. I like the rock in the stream at the bottom of the image, as it brings the viewer's eye from the bottom and through the pool, and then up the waterfall. I wonder if the log and tree on the left is needed for the story as it draws the viewer away from the main story, but again, that is a personal preference. A well-captured image that has been well thought out by the author. This is not a bird on a stick, but a bird doing something. It's in the bird bath, which is barely visible, but that additional element to the story raises this image up. The bird is sharp and there's a lot of detail with no blown out areas. The central position works in this instance. There is an orangey oval in the right background that could be removed as it is open or lift the background exposure a bit if there are other bokeh that could stop this orangey blob being seen in isolation. I would like to see the bird bath be a bit lighter to give more environmental context, but a personal preference perhaps, a great capture. There is a lot of skill to get these water drop images. This one is very colourful and the red and yellow contrast very well to make the image pop. The vertical yellow shaft with the umbrella slash flower additional droplet makes this image stand out. The blown out areas do distract. If your rules allow, these could be cloned out. The central composition works in this instance and it is a great image except for the blowouts from the lights. A beautiful backlit image of the sunflowers. The three heads is the right odd number of the flower heads and the diagonal positioning adds to the energy of the image. The light is coming from the right and it looks to be a golden hour shot. The yellows and greens are not oversaturated. There is some blue in the sky on the left side and the washed out sky on the right can be forgiven as it's closer to the light source. A great image. Oh, and I just noticed the bud between the second and third flowers. It conjures up dad, then mum, with the eldest offspring on the right and the newest sibling nestled protectively in between. It all adds to the story that can keep a viewer continuing to look at your image. The lace monitor coming for a drink. This image is beautifully lit with the light fading from the front to the back of the image. 
the light source appears to be low, and I love the shadow of the head and tongue on the stump part of the log. The background is beautifully out of focus. Getting down low has made this image, as a shot from higher up would have destroyed the story that you've depicted here. There is detail right down the body of the monitor with beautiful areas of shadows. The reflection in the water adds to the image and you have not tried to lighten it as it has the correct appearance. A great image. I wish I'd taken it. This is a great shot of the New Holland Honey Eater. It's sharp throughout and even has captured the bits of the bud in the beak that it's been pecking at. The eye is very clear. I like the browns at the top of the leg and the colours look right. There appears to be a blurred version of a full flower behind the honey eater. This is a bit distracting but with nature you have to take what you get in the environment. A well captured image with the bird doing something by eating to add to the story. I love the creativity behind this image. When you shoot a number of water splashes, the story starts to merge and they become yet another water splash. The author has done a great job in inventing a story with the water splash being the subject of a stamp. The splash itself has been mirrored so that there's a symmetrical look that changes the splash to an art form which is compatible for the subject of a stamp. Normally text is distracting in an image but in this instance it's expected and so the text gets a brief look before the viewer returns to the subject. The perforated edges give a framing to the image, a well-conceived image. A dark image that has me wondering what the author wants me to look at. We have water, mountains and moody sky. I suspect that the author wanted to emphasise the low cloud, particularly those down low in the valleys and gullies. There's detail in the shadows and the light on the right hand side and this could have been used to highlight the mountainside and draw the viewer towards the low cloud in the middle which could be lightened slightly and then up through the snowy peak to the moody clouds. There is a great image here wanting to get out with more judicious use of the tonal ranges within the original image, hence the non-acceptance to give the author another chance if my comments make sense to them. This is another image that has potential and hence a second chance. The light is coming from the right side and there's a great glow in the gap of the trees near the middle. There's detail in the trees on the right that is lost. The scene to the left of the pole in the middle does not hold much interest. The author could consider a crop just to the left of that pole so that the glow is on the thirds and then raise the shadows on the right trees to reveal some detail. To me this is another good image wanting to get out. There's too much bland grey sky with an out of focus moon and this draws the viewer away from the detail that is lost in the shadows. I would suggest a crop above the hills to where there is a transition between the darker and lighter greys. Perhaps the hill on the right could be cropped a little as well as it is the light on the hills on the left that is the main subject. The shadows on the slope facing the viewer could be lightened to show more detail. There is potential there. The old shed has been well spotted under a moody sky. That has resulted in a flattish tonal range, particularly in the shed itself. Again, some details are being hidden in the shadows of the shed interior. If the author shot in raw, then there may be detail to be recovered. If a JPEG, then there's still scope. Revisit this image and see if you can recover some detail in the darker areas. The HDR treatment of this image 
has destroyed the potential that this image originally had. By removing any semblance of a shadow, it becomes flat and unnatural. There are many great passages that must have been in the original image. The corners, the fireplace and the grunge on the floor all have shadows. This is the opposite to other images where I'm saying to put the shadows in. I know, I've tried it, and there is a great image lurking here. The author just needs to bring it out. This is a shot that your rules make me choose to give you another try at this image. There are some lovely starbursts with the lights. There's a goodish tonal range, but I think that there can be a touch more contrast. The reason for a second chance is the verticals of the two outer buildings. They are slanting inwards, as are the central buildings as well, but Lightroom, or Adobe Camera Raw, and Photoshop have tools to correct this problem. In Photoshop, look at the perspective crop. A great image, it just needs tweaking and deserves a better award then. I look at this image and it's very clear what the author wants me, the viewer, to see, the railway bridge. But to me it's a bit too bright. There are some beautiful shadows on the vertical supports on the front left and on the sleepers that will help to frame the tracks as the viewer transitions from the front of the bridge to the lighter area across the river. And the trees on the right have wonderful light bark that contrasts with their immediate background. I would not crop the mess on the left, as the bridge needs to be where it is in the image. This image has great potential if the author can darken down the image and get more tonal range in the bridge and the right side of the image. It deserves better, hence the second chance. My initial thoughts on this image were that it is dark, and then I wondered what the author wanted me, the viewer, to look at. Is it the three people or the architecture? The three people blend into the dark, low-key mood of the image. This may have been the intention of the author, but the viewer has to look carefully to see the interaction of the woman on the right with the other two people. And then there is the architecture. There is a lot of detail that's hidden in the shadows. The two panels on the sides could have the shadows raised to give leading lines. The seat could be brightened a little, both of which would help to draw the viewer's eye towards the three figures. If the subject is the architecture, then the figures are distracting, and the details of the architecture are lost in the darkness. As a suggestion, consider cropping from the right to just to the right of the seat. This will remove the bright lights on the right and frame the three figures between the seat and the wall. Getting more tonal values instead of the low-key look would add more interest, a good image that has potential. A well-spotted set of footprints and paw prints the group of three is a good use of the odd number rule. The depth of field has sharpness falling off nicely. A suggestion, if you see this composition again, you might be able to get the footprints in a diagonal from the bottom left, just to add a bit of dynamics to the image. The train is the diagonal that gives energy to the image. The engine and carriages are sharp, so there's ample depth of field. The steam is well balanced with minimal blowouts compared to the adjacent dark engine front where there is still detail, so the dynamic range was well handled. To me what lets this image down is the flatness of the tonal range in the background. It makes me feel that it's been processed to remove the shadows. I'm probably wrong, but I find it distracting from the great image of the train.
a nice sharp image of a zebra finch on a branch. The author has done well to capture the detail in the finch. I had expected some out-of-focus detail in the background as they frequent bushy areas, but sometimes you get one against a clear sky. Now, small birds are not always cooperative and nicely turn around so that you can get a shot. Maybe this is what happened for the author, but unfortunately, a rear-end shot of a bird is not the most flattering and so drops the award lower than the technical aspects of the image deserve. Another image where detail is getting lost in the shadows. Yes, it is at night, and yes, the author wants to keep the lights from blowing out too much. I guess that I come back to what the author wants me, as the viewer, to see. Is it the carriageway on the bridge top? Is it the understructure of the bridge and the pylons? Is it the reflections of the lights in the water? If it is the light reflections, particularly the verticals, then perhaps crop the middle section just to the left of the left reflection and just to the left of the black pile in the water. You lose the starburst of the light on the left, which has been well captured, but that now starts to tell the viewer what you intend them to see. There are other compositions, so do experiment and also raise some of the shadows under the bridge. There is a lot of potential in this image that has been well captured. This is basically a record shot of an outing in the old Ford. There are some good aspects in how this shot was handled, but it is let down by the car behind pulling out the car across the road and the two women in the background. Putting that aside, the car has been well captured, with the reflections off the shiny surfaces well handled. The wheel hubs look white, so they are not blown out, with details still in their lighter areas. Basically, a well handled shot. Many times, when the whale dives, it can be just a small gap to the water. This author has been lucky enough to get a decent waterfall from the tail. The exposure has been handled well as there is minimal blowout in the water. The shutter speed has been sufficient to freeze the water droplets with just the hint of motion blur which emphasises the action. The treatment has given dark water and the light tail a good tonal range. And although we cannot see the body of the whale beyond the waterfall, the brain knows what's going on here and makes the disembodied white tail believable. A great capture. An immediate impact. The viewer immediately knows what the author has decided is the subject. The scarf draws the eye to the goggles and the helmet. The chrome bar completes the picture of an association with racing. The scarf has areas where some details could be lost, but the folds, with a hint of shadows, redeems this. The leather helmet has handled the shine on the crease well, as has the reflection in the goggles. The one downside is the roller door, and concrete. It's dark enough to be not too distracting, but it does come into the consciousness of the viewer. A good tonal range and a great image. It's clear what the author wants the viewer to see. A wonderful portrait of the dog, fully absorbed by something outside of the frame. The sharpness of the eye, nose and fur combined with the out-of-focus background shows a clever choice of f-stop. I had originally thought that the fur at the top left was a bit blown out, but when I went to my calibrated screen to write these comments, I found that there is still enough detail there, so bumped the award up another level. The gaze does take the viewer out of the frame if you follow it, Consider flipping the image so that you come in from the left and then get stopped by the dog. 
If you do follow the gaze, the tendency is to come back into the frame from the left again. Also, the detail of the fur around the ear gets more noticed. A great image. There is no doubt what the author wants the viewer to see. The ship at night with some wonderful reflections in the water. There is the right amount of water to show the reflections and to also set the environment for the docked ship. There's a great range of lights and dark with greys along the ship, which helps for a good mono. Writing in an image is always a danger, but the tonal changes across the words mutes their distraction very well. The star bursts of the lights is well handled with the choice of f-stop, even a corona ring. There is just enough light on the funnels to separate them from the inky black night sky. My style of photography and judging is to consider how the viewer would negotiate their way around the image. This involves the story, the composition and the technical. I find that people enter competitions to get feedback and I offer suggestions, not dictates, that the author can consider. As judging is so subjective, these suggestions are for consideration to be either tried out or rejected. That is how my photography has developed over the years. I started my photographic journey back in 2013. With retirement looming, I learned that you can never stop learning how to take a good photo and also how to post-process. I started at the Castle Hill RSL Photography Club, which is the largest in New South Wales. Over eight years, I volunteered to be the competition coordinator, then becoming the vice president, president and now the past president. In 2017, I joined the Entrance Camera Club, becoming the print secretary. We generally have over 80 prints from B, A and advanced grades. After completing a judging course, I qualified for the Federation of Camera Clubs New South Wales Judges List. I am currently judging the BirdLife Australia competition. External competitions beckoned. I joined the Australia Photographic Society, eventually attaining the APS Grand Master Distinction. I've also been awarded the APS Exhibitors Medal. There are only 22 other APS members who hold that on a level. Oh, and I also have the FIAP Excellence Distinction. So, over the years, I've seen many great images in both club and external exhibitions. To achieve my current level, I've had to learn what works with images. That is what I'm trying to pass on with my comments to your competition. These images span my international successes. As you can see, I tend to shoot nature and sports action, but have had success with other genres as well.